بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين uh, This is the second lecture that talks about the figures and charts in the first part of this chapter which is the structured approach for cost reduction Here we have some four charts or figures inside the chapter and I like very much the chart or the tables or the figures because they better make us better understand the issues and better analyze the ideas and make it simpler for understanding. Here we will talk about four things. Number one, the cost management. The cost management approach. This table, this figure, analyzes the relationship between the, our enterprise with the previous, which are, who are the suppliers, and with the upcoming parties who are the customers. So where is the cost reduction? How we can control the cost? Second figure that talks about the cost, the cost management process. We want to manage our cost. Is there some procedures or process, an action we can take to better manage our cost, better analyze the ways of controlling the cost? Yes, we have it in a simple form. Why not to have it in some kind of ideas that we can use them? Number. Three, short number three, that talks about managing life cycle cost. We want to think about the life cycle of the cost through the process. We have them both in suppliers, we have the stages in order to build value on these items until we reach the customers. And we have multiple parties engaged, multiple departments working the cost. So this is a way of understanding the life cycle. Make it simple and easy for the us in order to try to find ways controlling the cost. And finally, we have the framework for cost reduction. Yes, it's an overall table that is consisting of four stages or four sections. And these sections very simply tells us these are very important issues. You should put much effort on it, on them. These are very simple issues. You can take the decision right away. And these sides take some kind of attention according to the value, according to the availability of these supplies. We will see all the details in the book. Let's go back to the chapter and see the figures added to the cost reduction approach. Figure number 10 one, the course about the cost management approach. We have the enterprise here in the middle. And we have the customer needs that covers the whole process. This is what makes us want what to work in order to satisfy the customers. So what the customer needs, we are reaching the satisfaction value. So think about the suppliers, tier one and tier two and tier three. We want to, the, to purchase the commodities that are needed or required or asked to be satisfied by the customers. So this is a strategic cost management supply chain point of view. Relationship between us is very important. A better understanding, better exchange of information is essential issue to reach the final goal. So how we can do this? The enterprise by itself, it's a single company focused cost reduction initiative. 
This is previously what happens. Me as the organization, I'm purchasing, I'm selling, I'm producing. It's my work to do, to do it by myself. What happens in the market, I purchase it. What is happening in the market, I will sell it. That's it. This is a very naive point of view. Regarding what is today is very essential and very important for to be a benchmark, or oh, these are the best practices that happens with the benchmark companies, they build what we say it's a strategic cost management. Cost management point of view, yes. The finished goods and services focused that reach the customers it starts very early with the whole process. Yeah, we as an enterprise, I'm not analyzing the cost by myself, for myself, but I'm, I'm analyzing the cost for the whole process. It means we want to sell the commodity for the customer with $10 as a price. Let's, let us talk about the cost analysis during the whole process that starts very, very early with the, the first trials of the suppliers. If we can move on to the origins of the suppliers and we can try to understand what is the value added and the cost added and the price added for each one and try to better analyze them, finally we can understand the whole process. So this is the new point of view we need to understand. This is the secret of the cost reduction. Let's move to the figure number two. Figure number two that talks about, talks, about, talks about the cost management process. Here we have some procedures and actions to be taken in order to us, to, it's for us as a supply chain, which is what we talk about in the first figure, that the supply chain strategic cost management point of view. Here we have a joint efforts. Everybody is engaging to work hard with this issue in order to control the cost. Most focus is single company, this is what happens previously. Today we need to think about the whole supply chain focus. How we can have a process to take us from this stage to the wide area stage simply by think about the value engineering analysis do the value engineering analysis. This is how we can do it. Analyze the value, design the value, design the commodities, and how we can make the commodities simpler with fewer items, so the cost is simpler and going to be cheaper. Another thing which is the on-site supply development, yes, we want to support the suppliers develop the ability of the suppliers on site, on their facilities, on their locations. Why this happens? Because we have a long lasting relationship with these suppliers. We want to develop them because they are serving us, because they are providing us with the, what is needed. Helping them, it, it, it means simply helping us, helping ourselves. Another thing as a process we do, it's the cross enterprise cost improvement. It's the whole production process inside the organization should be under control and should think about the continuous improvement. Think about minimizing the effort, the money, the cost, the waste, the time, the energy. Everything deals with the communities we purchase through the journey inside the organization. When the communities enter the organization, they are under control. Any cost items is minimized or under analysis. Do we need these cost items or should we neglect them? A fourth thing we do in the process of managing our course is joining brainstorming sessions from different parties. The final goal is improving our cost, controlling our cost. So we need to think of a value added to the products by minimizing the cost on the other side, creating higher benefits and 
simplifying the products, make them simpler and cheaper. This happens throughout the brainstorming sessions with the suppliers, with the procurement staff, with the operations staff, with the engineers. Sometimes we can take ideas from the benchmarks leaders or from the, the, the competitors. Move another thing to the supplier suggestion programs. There are programs from the suppliers suggested Suppliers suggest them rework some items, work hard on some designs, try to remodificate our process of production. So why not to join together the programs of our organizations with the programs of production of the suppliers? Link our programs operations with the suppliers programs operations and finally we think about the supply chain compression make it fewer make it simpler make it thin make it easier supply chain compression it means compress the idea compress the work compress the time compress the effort compress the people working and compress the machines shrink everything, shrink time, shrink effort, shrink money, shrink cost, shrink the services you need. Move on to figure number three that talks about the managing life cycle cost. The life cycle it starts very early with your idea. Yes, we have an idea. We have a concept of generating a new product or design. So we have here initial cost target. Starting the idea, we need to financially start, study the idea regarding the quality, the feasibility, the risk, the technology, the suppliers, the people working, finalizing issues. We are starting from scratch. Idea, concept generated with a point of view of technical and financial issues. So this is stage number one. Move to stage number two. We move to the idea, to the design stage. Yes, we want to design and develop and formulate the ideas on the minds, on the papers, to be on the papers, to be on the programs, on the computers or the mobile applications. We want to have the ideas to be designed, to, to visualize them in form of papers or on the screens. Think about the value engineering, the designs for manufacturing, for the purchasing, the assembly, the environment. Think about the uh, supplier's integrated abilities, the course that is targeted, the standardizations of how we can make the commodities they are the same. Number three, stage number three, it's initiating the prototype or pilot or launching a new product in reality. These are simple products. And this is my recommendation for anybody who starts a business or a small business. All the time, think about having your products to be in reality, in fewer or sampler items. We, you want to create a prototype, a sample of these products in reality from the designs. And these designs come from the ideas. So here we have, you have a cost for the item because you know exactly all the materials used, all the wages you need to pay, all the services or electricity you use. So you have a, a real sample that costs you, for example, $10. When you go to the fourth stage, which is ongoing production, we want to produce bigger numbers of these commodities. It means we need to Think about improving our cost reduction. Think about improving our cost, a price. Think about minimizing the materials we use. Minimizing the wages or the efforts of people, the energy, the services that this community will consume. So the sample usually 
is expensive for the organization. But we are, when we go to the stage of the ongoing production, we have samples that turn to be on the market stage. So the market stage need them to be in a reasonable prices. And finally, we have the product end of life. At the end of any product or brand or some kind of designs, they will die. Think about the TV sets when they were white and black. Think about the TV sets that were colored. No, no more people, rarely you find somebody purchase the TV sets before. Today, people are searching for screens, bigger screens, wider screens. They are having excellent colors, and we have, they have technology. So this is the end stage or the ending stage of some communities that are dying. And finally, we have figure number four that talks about the framework for cost reduction. This framework consists of two ACLs. We have number of available suppliers, fewer number of suppliers, and we have very high number of suppliers. In between, we have moderate number of suppliers. And a very important thing, which is the value of the communities or the services we will purchase or deal with, the value, yes. Things we want to purchase, are they low in value or are they high in value? When we move upwards, so the commodities are high in values, and in this area, we have limited number of suppliers, so this is a very dangerous area. Value is high, suppliers are low. So this is a strategic commodity. We need to think about leverage preferred suppliers. We need to think about deeply about the price analysis and focus much on the market, what happens in the market. Still in the value issue, it's very high, but we have plenty of suppliers. It's a critical product. Also, it's a strategic point of view. This time, we need to cost analyze. Why we go to the cost analyze in this issue, in this area? Because we have multiple suppliers. And we have availability of taking decisions among multiple alternatives. So think about the cost analysis. And collaborative cost reduction with some certain suppliers. Yes, we want to have collaborative relationship with selected suppliers among the big list of suppliers. And we want to focus on the total cost of ownership, TCO. We will move to the lower stages, lower areas. Think about the value for communities who want to purchase, they are not high, they are very low. They are symbol items. We can have them for low prices. So they are not critical communities as these communities. We have here two alternatives. The first one, if the, these low-valued communities are in a market that has a low number of providers, suppliers, still it's at the, 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 we call them unique products. Unique products. Think about cost analyze, analysis this time, and think about standardization for these requirements, because they are similar, cheaper, and they are not much important for the organization. It means we can find um, some kind of alternatives for them, or some, uh, they, they can't stop our production. On the other side, if we have plenty of people providing these items, and we, they are very low in their value for the organization, so we say they are generics. We need to understand what is the total delivered cost. Not purchase, delivered. It means maybe I could purchase it cheaper, but I need more money to deliver to our organization. Total delivered cost. The whole services, the whole issues linked with the cost, you know, and, 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 and a, a total 
issue which is cheaper to purchase it from the same city of, or, or from another supplier in another city. Another thing we can automate this work in order to make reductions in the purchasing involvement because the, the, this is a not critical issues and they are uh, symbol of anybody can purchase them and uh, the prices are everywhere nearly the same or the value is very simple and very small. Uh, usually I like the charts and the figures very much because they give us a visualized understanding of the words. It means if I want to talk much about the idea, on the other side I can have a simple figure that summarizes all my ideas in this table or in this figure. It's simpler and easier to better understand. And what happens in these textbooks, usually they have the figures followed by the discussion that talks about the figures. So you can minimize the effort of two pages by having two figures. So each page consists about discussion and talks about multiple issues that discusses this figure. So I recommend for the students or anybody working in the profession to have these figures all the time in mind or to review these figures from time to the other so you can better understand the topic that we are talking about. Thank you very much for your time and effort. See you again, inshallah.